the world's second largest continent split into 54 separate countries. From the forest to the savannah, life conquers every biome. Welcome to Africa at the Peoria Zoo. This is the zoo's newest exhibit, but also in my opinion, the only one worth featuring. We begin in a traditional African village surrounded by the sights, sounds, and smells of the open savannah. The first exhibit isn't far from the entrance and is viewable from a large open viewing hut that offers shade and viewing the animals. From there you can see an exhibit which is blocked off by a moat. That's the zoo's interpretation of the mighty Zambezi River. The savannah behind is home to the zoo's two 14-year-old white rhinos, Harris and Leo. Using their square-shaped lips, white rhinos graze the open savannah, but sadly, like all rhino species, the white rhino also faces poaching in their natural range for their bone-like horns that are actually made of keratin, the same material on your fingernails. With these boys, the zoo displays two grevy zebra, the largest type of zebra that got their name from Jewish grevy. They roam the plains of southeast Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia, in herds of normally 2 to 20 individuals. Moving on and exiting the viewing shelter is a good-sized exhibit for the Aldebra tortoise, found on the Aldebra Islands north of Madagascar. These tortoises can live anywhere from 80 to 120 years, with the oldest recorded reaching a whopping 255 years old. Not far away is a meshed enclosure displaying the forest side of Africa, home to the mandrill. These forest primates are omnivores, and for those of you who didn't know, yes, that means they eat meat and plants. Males have bright faces to attract females, and they're also equipped with six and a half inch long canines. To your right is another exhibit, this time an indoor for the mandrels, but of course on a day like today, they were enjoying their adjacent outdoor exhibit. The forest theme continues to another indoor for the black and white Colobus monkey, and around the bend is a shared exhibit between the Colobuses and their neighbors, the Red River Hogs. The monkeys and the hogs live together in this well-shaded yard, equipped with climbing structures for the monkeys and lots of ground space for the hogs, who feed on pretty much anything they can find on the forest floor. In the wild, these two share the same overlapping range, though I don't know if they cross paths often, but here in Peoria, they seem to get along just fine. If you do remember, I did state that the last indoors for the Columbus monkey. Well, that's because on the other side of the outdoor exhibit, the hogs have a separate indoor, which I'm sure comes in handy during Illinois' winters. According to our guide map, we have reached the halfway point in our journey. Welcome to what I consider to be the Lion Plaza. This large open space in the trail is built facing the zoo's lion exhibit. The exhibit is lush, grassy, and the cherry on top is a large rock facing the savannah, and from it the lions can look out over the zebra and rhino exhibit. The zoo is currently home to male Arthur and female Lizzie. Lions are the only two social cat living in groups called Pride, but Peoria Zoo used to be home to more than two lions. On December 4, 2015, Lizzie gave birth to three cubs litter named Naya, Kali, and Zuri. But since 2019, all the cubs were moved to New Orleans to hopefully become part of their own breeding plan and help grow lion populations. Exiting the plaza, you're given a sneak peek of the zoo's largest exhibit. But to save suspense, I'll save the best part for later. Temperature dramatically drops as you enter a boardwalk through the dense forest, getting higher and higher. About midway through is yet another viewing opportunity, but the walk up is not yet paid off until you reach the top, where you are welcome to a large viewing platform. Also, if this is a first show channel, welcome to Articulated Giraffe. The zoo is home to Fort, and among them is Finley, who turned 5 on July 25th. The giraffe is the world's tallest land mammal, with males reaching 18 feet and females about 14. The giraffe has a long purple tongue to get leaves from the thorny acacia tree, thought to be that color to protect from sunburn. Along with those, they have those horn-like things on their head called oscombs, which males use when fighting other males, necking the opponent. Along with their oversized roommates, have spotted two Thompson's gazelles, small hoopstock who graze on savanna grasses. Also, just like any other place displaying giraffes, you are encouraged to feed them. You may also see a holding yard, and continuing to your right, you can even take a peek into their indoor quarters. Your trek down the boardwalk is rewarded with another viewing of the white rhinos and zebras. The path then reaches the ground showing off front because of mud houses and many other structures used in the everyday lives of the natives. Also, grab a snack in the Zambezi River Lodge, and through the bushes is one last peek of the Zambezi River before a safari concludes. In my opinion, a peaceful ending to our journey through Africa. In 2009, when this $25 million exhibit opened, the curator said that zoo visitors would be amazed by what they see. She was right. Thank you for watching.